Hello, I hope everyone is well. Um, the purpose of this video is to walk through some problems involving force diagrams and friction. So um, I want to just uh, bring up some of the um, learning objectives on friction um, that hopefully we are familiar with at this point. So uh, first of all, just to review, static friction is the pr friction present when lateral force is present, but the object is not moving. Kinetic friction is present when the object is sliding. Um, so we did an investigation where we looked at how the static friction maximum and kinetic friction um, were influenced by normal force. As normal force gets bigger, um, the frictional amounts get bigger in a linear way. Um, so again, normal force kind of describes how tightly um, packed to get or tightly pushed together the two surfaces are. So you push two surfaces together more you have bigger normal force, you're going to expect more friction. Um, the way we can represent those equation-wise is um, the slope of this line, which gives you the newtons of friction per newton of normal force, is called coefficient of friction. Um, you get a different value for static friction than you do for kinetic friction. So um, if I want to calculate the static friction maximum for a surface, if I know that ratio, that coefficient of, of static friction, um, I can plug in any normal force, multiply by that coefficient, and it will tell me the static friction maximum um, in that uh, particular condition. Um, same thing for kinetic friction. I can plug in a normal force. I can multiply by that coefficient of static friction, which again is the newtons of friction that you get per newton of normal force to calculate a kinetic friction. So if we're just straight away calculating a friction amount, these are kind of the useful version of the equations that we want to use. We can rearrange those equations, right? If I wanted to think about how I calculate these coefficients of friction, if I divide through by normal force on each side, that's going to cancel normal force on this side. I'm dividing by normal force on the left. This is how we could calculate those coefficients of friction given a static friction maximum amount and a normal force. So um, if you had a particular trial, a particular case, and you knew the static friction um, maximum, if you divided by the normal force that was present to produce that static friction maximum, that's going to give you the coefficient of friction. Again, it's newtons of friction per newton, newton, single newton of normal force. Same thing for kinetic friction. If you know how much kinetic friction is present, and you know how much normal force is present, the ratio, the ratio of those will give you the coefficient of kinetic friction. As a little side note, the symbol that's usually used for coefficients of friction is the Greek letter mu. It's kind of like a U with a little tail on the front. Um, that's not so important as understanding what it tells you. Again, it's newtons of force per newton of uh, normal, sorry, newtons of friction per newton of normal force. Okay, so coming back to some practice problems. Um, I'm actually going to want to start with number two here. It's kind of a more representative sort of problem. Um, we'll walk through kind of the calculations that I made at each step. So um, we have a 99 Newton force applied to a 52 kilogram crate. So how does that come into the force diagram? I just called the 99 Newtons a push. Um, I needed to calculate the weight in newtons and thus the normal force acting on the crate using mass times g, right? Um, so that's 510 newtons downward. And of course, normal force in this case is going to be exactly the same. Um, it says that the crate begins to move. So I can assume that there is kinetic friction um, uh, taking hold in this case. So um, the coefficient of kinetic friction here is 0 0.150. So I already knew normal force. I knew gravity. I knew the force, uh, the size of the push. Um, this is obviously not to scale, right? These two vectors would be a lot longer than the 99 newtons, but the important thing is they cancel each other out. So um, question B, what normal force acts on the crate? Kind of just talked about that. It's going to equal the weight the pull of gravity on the object. Um, to find the kinetic friction, um, we're going to go back to that kinetic friction equation. So coefficient of friction times normal force 
will give you the kinetic friction force. So given coefficient of friction, calculated normal force, we see that the kinetic friction amount is going to be 76.5 newtons. If you want to think about it as a negative force because it's to the left, that is perfectly acceptable. Then we need to look at what net force is acting on the crate. Um, so in this case, we look at our balanced forces. These cancel out. Our left-right forces are not balanced. So um, looking at net force, um, kind of a couple ways to think about it. You could take 99 newtons minus 76.5, or if you, again, if you want to think about that as a negative force plus a positive force, uh, we're going to have an F net, an unbalanced force of 22.5 newtons to the right. Um, calculating acceleration, this is just Newton's second law, F net equals M times A, or rearranged here because we're calculating acceleration. The unbalanced force is 22.5 newtons. The mass in kilograms of the object is 52.0 kilograms. So we divide those out to find that the acceleration is about 0.4 meters per second per second. Again, what that means is if this was the force diagram and it continued to hold true, we would see the crate accelerate 0.4, um, you know, speed up 0.433 meters per second every second. So it'd be gaining that much speed every second. Um, Moving on to F, kind of a completely separate problem, but it says if um, the coefficient of static friction, mu s, or coefficient of friction uh, for static friction had equaled 0.25, would the 99 Newton force have been sufficient to cause the crate to accelerate? Um, draw a force diagram and explain why or why not. So um, we can really use the same force diagram. What would be Opposing the 99 newtons of force would be some amount of static friction, potentially. Um, the way that the static friction coefficient works is what you're actually calculating is the static friction maximum. So again, I'm taking the coefficient of friction, the newtons of friction per newton of normal force, 0.25, multiplying by normal force to see that the static friction maximum is 127.5 newtons. So that means the static friction could go all the way up to 127.5 newtons. If I'm pushing with 99 newtons of force, I'm not gonna be able to push hard enough to move it. I would need to push with 127.6 newtons of force to get it accelerating, right? The um, static friction, which would be represented to the left if I'm pushing to the right, could get as big as 127.5 newtons. Um, so that's a good run through of number two. I'm just going to give a quick preview um, of number one, three, and four. So number one, um, instead of being given the coefficient of friction, we're calculating the coefficient of friction. Um, again, we're given a frictional amount and we're given a normal force amount. So we can use that ratio to find uh, the coefficient of friction. Some other things to think about in this problem is if it is pushed at constant speed, the push force, 49 newtons, will equal the kinetic friction. They would have to be balanced or the object would be speeding up. So that's an assumption that we have to make, that the kinetic friction amount is going to equal the push as long as it's moving with steady speed. Um, D asks, what would the acceleration of the block be if the coefficient of kinetic friction was zero? Well, that means there's zero newtons of friction per newton of normal force. That means it's a frictionless surface. So for D, we just take away the frictional force. You have an unbalanced force of 49 newtons accelerating the object, okay? For number three, um, we have to go back to our techniques in drawing ramp force diagrams. In this case, it's 21 degree ramp. Um, just be careful on ramps, right? So gravity is straight downward, the gravitational force, the weight of the object, but normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So we worked a lot on how to set these up. Normal force here is not going to be 110 newtons. Normal force is going to equal the component of gravity that is acting into the surface. Um, so be careful with that one because it's normal force then that contributes to the kinetic friction, right? 
our kinetic friction amount is the coefficient of friction times normal force. Um, so in this case, we find that the x component of gravity is bigger than the kinetic friction, which is what we would expect. The difference between these two forces is the net force. And that net force then, along with the mass of the object, is going to control the acceleration. So it's a very quick run through. If you have additional questions on that, um, you can let me know. And then number four, we haven't really done this type of problem yet. Um, so I'm going to kind of leave that for uh, another discussion. Um, the main idea on this one is what's accelerating the system is the weight of the hanging object. Um, so that's kind of producing uh, a downward force on this two block system. So it's going to tend to accelerate the system uh, downward once you get past the pulley into the right with this object. Um, what's resisting that motion is the kinetic friction that's present between um, the uh, block and the surface. So we kind of have a negative force from friction, if you want to think about it that way, and a positive force from gravity, but it's only the gravity acting on this object. Um, the other tricky part of this is because both objects are kind of part of this accelerating system, when we think about the total mass of the system, we have to incorporate the mass of both blocks. So you'll see in the um, acceleration calculation, I don't use just one kilogram or 4.08 kilograms. I use the total um, uh, total mass of the system. So that's a trick on that one as well. And I think we'll have a further discussion of that problem later.